Welcome back. Well, online dating has fostered love matches around the world, but is it a healthy way to find a relationship? According to a recent sub survey, nine out of 10 dating app users believe they are addicted to the digital matchmakers, and 12% even said they were checking their matches while on a date. Crazy. Now, a new lawsuit accuses some of the leading dating apps of altering social reality. Mark New has more on the difficulty of disengaging. A new lawsuit accuses Match Group's portfolio of dating apps, which includes Tinder, Hinge, and The League, of having psychological, manipulative product features that lead to addiction. Liken it to a video game. So you play a video game the first time, and you enjoy it. And by enjoying it, what that means is your brain has released some dopamine, which then makes you feel good. You have to play more and longer and longer and longer to get the same squirt of dopamine. That's really an addiction. The lawsuit alleges that Match has gamified romance to manipulate dopamine response, transforming users into gamblers locked in a search for psychological rewards that Match makes elusive on purpose. The suit also takes aim at Hinge's marketing slogan that the app was designed to be deleted, saying that instead it should be designed to be addictive. We talked to this university student named Joe, who after several years of using Hinge, has gone on several dates, but never found true love. It's kind of disingenuous saying that, you know, they are in it to help you find someone. I think they're definitely in it for, they definitely try and push those like financial, you know, microtransactions on you. The thing that would make it addictive for most people is just pushing the idea that like, if you're not there, like, you know, sending out likes, trying to meet people, that you're going to miss out on something. Michelle Leno is a psychologist and host of the TV show Mind Matters. In an age of social media addiction, Leno emphasizes personal responsibility. It's like you, you go to the movies and they put popcorn on the screen, then all of a sudden you think you want popcorn. You know, is the theater responsible because, you, you know, multiple people are jumping up going to get large, you know, buckets of popcorn? No, because they're doing their jobs. Whenever we do our jobs, we're doing it to make money. And no matter what we're doing or what matter what business you consider, there's always some psychology behind it to keep you engaged. But Leno believes the case could be important in helping to shed light on how businesses utilize addiction to sell. Addiction happens a lot of times on a subconscious level, and you know that doing this makes you feel a certain way, but you don't realize necessarily that you're becoming addicted until that addiction is already there. It's an interesting first foray into this world of trying to overlap legalities with behavioral science. If nothing else, this is going to stimulate other people to recognize that sites have something different in mind than they have in their intent. As for Joe, he was planning to take a break from dating apps, but couldn't resist looking at another push text from a potential date via Hinge. I'm starting to come to the realization that I should probably stop looking. Mark New, CGTN, San Francisco. For more insight into dating apps, let's bring in Dr. Michelle Druin. She's professor of psychology at Purdue University in Fort Wayne. She's also author of the book, Out of Touch, How to Survive an Intimacy Famine. Pleasure to welcome you to the show, doctor. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, I want to talk about this lawsuit that alleges that these dating apps promote compulsive behavior. What is your take on that? Is, is, is that true in your opinion? I think everyone's search for love is probably the compulsive nature of what we need as a basic human motivation. So I'm not sure regarding the lawsuit what will happen, but it is tapping into a basic human need. We need to feel loved. We need to feel connected. And these apps are offering a route to that. So I'm not sure how much they're manipulating that. I'm not sure about the algorithms or how they're you know, asking for these microtransactions. However, I do know that they're tapping into a basic human need. And a lot of people are liking this, uh, likening this lawsuit to the ones that have been filed against other apps that employ kind of similar methods like Meta and, and Google. Are they kind of playing upon the same kind of concept here? That's likely the same concept. They're talking about the gamification of the apps, the fact that once you go into them, you are continuing to, sc continuing to scroll. And I think that you have a similar basis. On all of these social media apps, you are trying to be social. And as human beings, we are social. 
So I think the foundation of the lawsuit is probably relying upon the same principles. We want to talk about the, the gamification of dating. Um, Mark News mentioned that in his, in his story. How does it kind of take advantage of our need as humans, like you, you mentioned, to, to connect, to, to find um, companionship in other people? And, and it seems like they're playing off of that in a, in a big way. Yeah, well, like it or not, this is something <laughs> that we want to do as humans from an evolutionary perspective. We want to further the species. We want to feel connected. We want to feel like our life is witnessed. So I think any of these apps are definitely playing on this need that we have in order to feel connected and to find someone with whom or someone's with whom we can walk through life. They're tapping into our basic human motivations for love, sexuality, connection, friendship. And again, the gamification, I think, is to keep people involved in the app, to keep them searching. However, I think the ultimate goal, or at least the creation of these applications, was supposed to be to help people find love. So I think our original motivations for even being on these applications was to find a connection. How do you think COVID played a role in making these uh, dating apps even more popular? They were, of course, popular before we're in a world of social media, but it seems like during COVID, we were all really craving those types of connections um, and social media filled that void for us. Do you think COVID definitely propelled these uh, dating apps into becoming even more popular? Well, yeah, I mean, during COVID, people had very few options to meet individuals face to face. You were really confined to a bubble that you had to predetermine people who are already in your social circle. Widening your social circle with anyone who was not online was not possible because of the sanctions that were imposed because of COVID. And I think this has permeated all aspects of society. We see it in higher education that students are maybe not wanting to attend face-to-face -face classes as much. They are leaning into this digital revolution. And really, as you say, there were digital communications before. People were relying on phones to communicate before. But now, I think they've gotten really comfortable in navigating their social relationships online and beginning love online. So I think that it's now the standard bar. We, I think the statistics are now a third of Americans, or three in 10, have tried a dating app. And, you know, about one in 10 have had a serious relationship or married someone through a dating app. So they do eventually, some of them find real connections. And even those who don't find marriage or don't find commitment, they sometimes will go on dates. I think about one third of individuals or maybe one in five have met someone who then they've gone on a date, a date with if it wasn't even a committed relationship. So I think COVID has propelled us more into it, but I think this is the general nature of a shift that's happened in society where we're just navigating more of our social relationships online. Uh, the, the, the man that was interviewed in Mark News Package, I don't know if you heard, but he, he kind of admitted, you know, cheekily that I, I am addicted to this, but, but yet he still comes back to that phone and still continues to, to scroll. So it, is it hard to get over that addiction, even when you know you are addicted and you admit it, is it easy, easy to overcome um, these types of, of, of formulas that, that uh, the apps are so good at, at uh, promoting? Well, it's not easy to overcome because as humans, we have a social brain. And because so many people have become reliant upon these technologies to communicate with each other, if you're not in that game, you may have very few opportunities to meet people in real life. People aren't going out the way they were before. People are, you know, meeting their friends online. They're gaming together. They're texting with each other. They're catching up on social media. And so if that is the social circle that you're in, it's offering you very little opportunity to break out of that and actually meet people in a face-to-face -face environment. I'll bring it back again to my higher education experience. There are fewer opportunities for people to meet friends and potential relationships in our classrooms because more people have shifted to an online class environment or more students are wanting to take their classes online. So I think that it's just the general nature of the way society has flipped. Dr. Michelle Druin, professor of psychology at Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Thank you so much for your expertise today. Thank you.